Today we're going to look at an extension of the well-known triangular numbers. But in order to motivate that, let's recall what the triangular numbers are. So let's recall that the triangular numbers can be represented by dots in a triangle. So for example, the number one is a triangular number because this is like thought of as a single dot kind of in a trivial triangle. Next, the number three or one plus two is a triangular number because we've got that constructed into a triangle right there. Furthermore, the third triangular number is one plus two plus three. Here we've got a row of three, two, and one, so that's the number six. Then we can say that 10 is the fourth triangular number as we can organize 10 dots into this sort of shape. So I'm using a little bit of non-standard notation here. So I have this superscript in parentheses with the two, just to say that here we have like a two-dimensional type of shape. So you can think of the triangle as being a two-dimensional shape. And then depending on how many rows we have, that's our subscript. So here we have a row, only one row, so we've got a subscript of one. Here we have two rows, we have a subscript of two. Down here we have four rows, we have a subscript of four. And so generally the nth triangular number is the sum one plus two plus three all the way up to n, and that has a well-known closed form of n times n plus one over two. Now from the triangular numbers, I'd like to move to the tetrahedral numbers. And if the triangular numbers can be represented by dots in a triangle, then the tet tetrahedral numbers can be represented by dots in a tetrahedron. So one is the first tetrahedral number. And let's notice I'm using the same kind of notation. I have a superscript of three here because this is a three dimensional type of number. And then a su subscript depending on like how many rows I have. So the second tetrahedral number is one plus three or four. So I've got this triangle making the base that has three terms in it. And then this guy kind of at the apex, which is my top. So that's like a triangle with one dot. So we can really think about this as the first triangular number plus the second triangular number as we've written right here. So that's the number four, like we said. Then the third tetrahedral number will be built with a base triangle, which is the third triangular number. So that's in green, so that's six. And then the next level will be the second triangular number. So that's in blue, that's three. And then the top level, the apex, will be the first triangular number, so that's one. So here we have T33 is one plus three plus six. So I think you can see what's happening in general. The nth tetrahedral number can be built out of triangular numbers. So the base of the nth such tetrahedron will be built out of the nth triangular number. The next level will be the n minus first triangular number, and then the apex will be the first triangular number. So our total number of dots will be the sum of all of those triangular numbers. Now, at this moment, we won't prove this, but this has a nice closed form of n times n plus one times n plus two over three factorial. So now let's compare this formula to the one that we have over here. So here we have a rising product of two terms, starting at n and then ending at n plus one, so two terms, so n times n plus one over two. But we can really think about two as two factorial. And then over here, we have a rising product of three terms, n, n plus one, n plus two over three factorial. So I think this motivates something that's happening in general, which we'll explore now. So we just got done motivating kind of our goal for this video, and that is to look at generalized triangular numbers. So let's clean that up a little bit into one package. So let's say for natural numbers m and n, we'll define t underscore n superscript one to be equal to n, and then recursively we'll define t underscore n superscript m plus one to be the sum as k goes from one to n of t underscore k superscript m. So in other words, the, m, the nth m plus one triangular number, maybe m plus one generalized triangular number, is the sum of the first n generalized m triangular numbers. 
So here's some examples like we saw on the last board. So the first is kind of like our standard triangular numbers. So TN upper two will be one plus two plus three all the way up to N. We had a closed form for that, which I won't recall right now. And that's based off of kind of our base setup right here. And then our tetrahedral numbers, so those are the sum of the triangular numbers. So that's what we have here. And then one step above that are the so-called pentatope numbers. You can think about this as numbers where the dots are arranged in some sort of four-dimensional tetrahedron, although that's obviously hard to visualize. But we have TN4 is T13 plus all the way up to TN. That should be a three. Great. And now our remaining goal will be to find a closed form for all of these. And we'll do that using one of my favorite tools, which is discrete calculus. What I like about this tool is that it's not super complicated, but it's not well known. So it always seems kind of like magic. We'll start by defining something like the derivative for sequences. It's in fact called the backwards difference operator. So this can be done with the forward or the backwards difference operator. So for a sequence A0, A1, A2, so on and so forth, we define the difference operator of AK to be AK minus AK minus one. So it's the difference of those two sequential terms from our sequence. Then we've got the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus, which relates this finite sum with this backwards difference operator. So if we apply the backwards difference operator and then take the sum, we end up with a n minus a zero. So let's see how this proof goes, although it's fairly quick because everything is constructed quite nicely. So we have the sum as k goes from one to n of the backwards difference operator a k. So that's gonna be the sum as k goes from one to n of a k minus a k minus one by the definition of the backwards dif difference operator. But that's gonna be the sum as k goes from one to n of a k minus the sum as k goes from one to n of a k minus one. But then when we can re-index this a little bit. Let's re-index this so it starts at zero and ends at n minus one. That turns this k minus one into a k. In fact, what we really just did is replaced all of the k's with k plus one in this term. But now let's note that these sums are almost exactly the same. It's just this one has a different final term, one more term at the top, whereas this one has one more term at the bottom. So everything cancels except for that. Essentially what's happening is we're telescoping. So this gives us exactly our result, a n minus a zero. Okay, so now that we've got this recalled, we're ready to state and prove a closed form for these numbers. Okay, so now we're ready for a closed form for our generalized triangular number, and that is T superscript M plus one subscript N is equal to this rising product of M terms, N times N plus one times N plus two, ending at N plus M over M plus one factorial. But there's some notation for that, and that's this rising power N to the M plus one with an overline over M plus one factorial. Okay, so like I alluded to before, we're gonna do this using the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus. So that means we need to look at maybe the derivative of something that looks like this. So let's do that. So let's take this discrete derivative or this reverse difference operator of k to the rising power m plus one. But notice that's gonna be equal to this discrete derivative or this backwards difference operator of k times k plus one, ending at k plus m minus one, and then k plus m. And then, good. So that's taking the numerator right here with just a k mixed in. Okay, so that's gonna be equal to this object minus that object where k has been replaced with k minus one, based off our definition of this delta. So that gives us k, k plus one, all the way up k plus m minus one, and then k plus m. And then from that we subtract, so I think we need a new line, k minus one times k 
times k plus 1 ending at k plus m minus 1. So notice each of these have m total terms. They just have different starting points. Again, that's based off of this definition of delta. Notice we've got a greatest common factor for each of these terms, which is pretty easy to get our hands on. So this k, k plus 1 ending at k plus m minus 1 is common to both of these. So that means we can factor it out. So let's do that. So if we factor it out, we have k times k plus 1 ending at k plus m minus 1. Then what are we left with? Well, here, maybe I'll put this in green parentheses. For the first term, we're left with k plus m. And then for the second term, we're left with k minus 1. Good. But now let's do a little bit of simplification. If we simplify this, this simplifies to m plus 1. And then this is exactly our rising power, k to the m over line. So here we have this is m plus 1 times k to the m over line. And now that we've got this like little bit worked out, we're actually ready to finish this off pretty quickly. Now we're ready to finish this thing off and we're doing this essentially inductively, although we're keeping it light in today's video, so I won't do that maybe as heavy handed as I sometimes do. Okay, so let's start with this, tn m plus one. So that's gonna be equal to the sum as k goes from one up to n of t upper m, subscript k. So it's the sum of the first n generalized triangular numbers at kind of level m, if you will. So that gives us the m plus first triangular, or the nth triangular number at level m plus 1. Okay, and so inductively we can assume that we have the standard or the closed form for this guy right here. So this is going to be the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of, so this will be the nth rising power of k divided by m factorial. But now we're going to factor something out of this. So let's factor a 1 over m plus 1 factorial out of this. That leaves us with the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of m plus 1 times k to the m with an overline. And that's because I essentially divided and multiplied by m plus 1 to get everything in order. But by what we just finished showing, we know this guy right here, this m plus 1 times k to the m over line is exactly the reverse difference operator applied to k m plus 1 over line. So let's write that down. We have 1 over m plus 1 factorial, and then the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of k m plus 1 over line like that with this forward or reverse difference operator applied. But now we can apply the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus to that to give us 1 over m plus 1 factorial. And then we have k m plus 1 over line evaluated at n and 0. Again, by that fundamental theorem of discrete calculus, uh, evaluating at 0 gives us 0. Evaluating at n gives us n to the m plus 1 over line which is exactly where we wanted to end up. And that's a good place to stop.